I am Mustafa Mukhtar Fouda from Egypt. I work as Minister Advisor on Biodiversity, but at the same time, I am the national focal point for several uh, biodiversity related conventions like CBD, like CMS, and Ramsar. Whenever we talk about migrating animals, especially birds, we have to think about bird migration as a very interesting phenomena that attracted the attention of man for many, many millennia. And there was a time when they were able to come close to them, they were able even to catch them and became part of their own social habit or social heritage or, shall we say, socio-economic as well. What I mean, they caught them either because they are very poor, they need to be fed, or use them as symbol for power, especially for raptors uh, and large predators, as you know, or even a symbol for many, many nations as well. And this continued for hundreds and thousands of years. But over the last few years, many individuals in some countries that they found it is more attractive to catch as many as you can. They have applied different techniques, different instruments that actually became a very serious matter as evident by many, many species. Population had declined dramatically. Based on that, and uh, this issue was discussed many, many times at uh, CUP of CMS. And last year, uh, last CUP in Ecuador, a decision was taken. A decision was taken to establish a task force to deal with this matter and look at it from all different points of view. What are the causes for it, the historical aspect for it, how can we provide some remedies for it, not only by saying no, what is that? No, you can apply some uh, techniques uh, either for communication, for example, or awareness, or sometimes you can apply law but most of all, you have to deal with the socio-economics because a lot of poor communities, they uh, consider bird migration, hence bird uh, capturing is essential part. Catching quails, for example, is a matter of uh, importance for poor communities and uh, they have their own views. It's not only because of the social, but even they always say, if you don't catch them, they will die because they are short-lived birds, for example. And uh, when you go and deal with that issue, with those kind of people, they are. Uh, this is completely different if you deal with someone who deals with raptors. They uh, catch raptors uh, and they sell them very, very, very highly to some countries or they train them or whatever. What I hope is different from the practicality. I hope that we'll come up with some recommendation that can be implemented and are practical. But this is not an easy because it is not only you sit and talk about science. You have to get some NGOs. There are many NGO people, they will be there as well. We get some people from civil society as well and regional international organizations as well as the secretariat of the CMS and all of the uh, focal points of the task force. So when you have this kind of different kind of people, we don't expect to reach a consensus very quickly. You have to look at the problem to understand the scope, to great extent what can you do. Well, who and not only what can you do, who's going to do what as well, to share the responsibilities as well, how much is going to cost if we decided to consider issues like, uh, some issues like uh, incentives, for example, and things like that. So I hope that at least the dialogue will reach some kind of agreement or understanding of the problem itself, either by decision makers, because the minister, I hope, he will attend the meeting or at least the opening ceremony, he promised to do that, uh, to the grassroots uh, where uh, local people uh, can benefit from uh, any kind of decision that we may take. So I'm very optimistic because uh, I'm a fighter all my life and I always take things in a very quiet way. Uh, I convince people, I have a lot of patience, so I use my skills and 
communications to get the attention of people but act ac uh, accordingly in a positive way. As an Egyptian, and I know quite well what's going on, it's not only Egypt, there are many other countries in the Mediterranean, they have more or less the same situation. All right, this is number one. Uh, number two, what happened in Egypt, like in other Arab countries in the region over the last few years, uh, there was no law and order for some time, and people's lives were at stake. So the people have to think uh, in a different way. Uh, when I was in charge of nature conservation, for example, all what I needed to do, I just communicate with the Ministry of uh, Interior, especially the police, and then we make the raid or we make the campaign and we go straight and confiscate everything and took these people to the court. I have that courage to do all of this. But now if I have to go, for example, and I have to face with someone with machine gun, what do you expect? Do you want me to sacrifice uh, the life of rangers that they are working with us, whatever? We have to be very uh, practical from uh, that point of view, and I speak very, very frankly. But the situation in Egypt is much, much uh, calmer now. Uh, we have a new constitution, we have a new government, uh, we have a new parliament, and things are getting better every day. Uh, from that point of view, we are in a position to take the issue to the highest level and convince decision makers uh, with, the, uh, with the recommendation that we think uh, uh, as a group, because this is a collective uh, work. It's not only me or others, but almost about 40 people will attend this workshop and then uh, we listen them, to them carefully and we see whether whatever is uh, said will be acceptable practically or not. And then we wish the, uh, good luck for all of uh, us because it is a good experience, it is challenging, and if you succeed, it will be disseminated to many other regions in the world. And that will be our course, our, uh, it will be worth it, yeah.